Hey, welcome to iFlip for Math MathCast, lesson 10-4, Subtract Fractions with Unlike Denominators. I'm Mrs. Gooding, and our quote tonight is by William Shakespeare. He said, it is not in the stars to hold our destiny, but in ourselves, which if you think about that, I think it kind of means that sometimes we have misfortune in life or sometimes really great things happen to us, but for the most part, we can really help our destiny along by working hard and not giving up and having a great attitude towards life. Anyway, I hope you have a great attitude towards math and that you work hard and don't give up. Our learning goal tonight is to subtract fractions with different denominators, and that word unlike just means different. Here are our individual lesson learning goals. Make a cake to find the LCM, or the least common multiple of the two denominators. Create equivalent fractions using the LCM as the new denominator. Subtract the numerators and simplify if needed. Those are literally the steps you're going to take tonight to subtract fractions with unlike denominators. And that picture is of the Globe Theater where Shakespeare's plays were performed early when he was still alive, which was in the 1600s. So it's kind of cool. I just want to go over again that word fraction. Understand that it means an amount that is greater than zero and less than one. It's a very small amount. We might add it to a whole number later on, but the fraction part of a number, the numerator and the denominator is always greater than zero and less than one. There's Romeo and Juliet. You've probably all heard about them. Here is our example, um, four sevenths minus one third. And remember, I'm writing them horizontally here, but when you write them out, I want you to be writing them vertically as I write them on the bamboo tablet. Okay, so I wrote it the same way I wrote it on the example page, horizontally, because I wanted to remind you that in subtraction, whichever number comes first has to be the number on top. So I wrote the four sevenths vertically on top, and then I wrote one third on the bottom. Now, the next step is to make a cake and find denominators that are the same, because without that least common denominator or least common multiple, we can't subtract these numbers because the pieces are different sizes. So we're going to come over here and make our cake. Um, and we will put both of our denominators inside the bottom layer of the cake. 7 comma 3. It doesn't matter which order you put them in because they're not a fraction. They're two separate denominators with a comma. And ask yourself what number goes into both 7 and 3. And the only number that will divide evenly into them, just like a regular division problem, is 1. 1 goes into 7, 7 times. 1 goes into 3, 3 times. So once we've repeated that set of numbers and we have a 1 in the, that layer of our cake, then we know that we can make our L. Remember, if you have more layers, your L is going to have a little jig jog here. But if you turn your head sideways, you can still see that L. And you can always go back and watch how to make a cake to find the LCM in an earlier lesson. I think it's in 9 dash something or 10 dash 2 maybe. So now I multiply all those numbers in the L together. So the numbers in the layers and the numbers on top. 1 times 7 is 7 and 7 times 3 is 21. So the LCM is 21 which means that my new common denominator or my new denominator that is the same is going to be 21. So I'm going to create my equivalent fraction now. So I ask myself what would I multiply this 7 by to get 21? And 7 times 3 is 21. Well, whatever I do to the denominator, I have to do to the numerator. So I multiply 4 times 3 as well. And 4 times 3 is 12. Now I come down to this fraction. What do I do to 3 to get to 21? And I multiply it by 7. 3 times 7 is 21. So 1 times 7 is 7. And now, I'm ready to subtract. Remember, I only subtract the numerator. 12 minus 7 is 5. And my numerator, 21, stays the same. Now, I know that I can't simplify this fraction because 5 is a prime number. And 5 won't divide evenly into 21. So 5 21st is my final answer. Let's try some more. Every one of these pages, you're going to see one of the plays that Shakespeare wrote, or on this particular page, more than one. That's Shakespeare sitting in the chair and over on the right. They actually know that's a picture of Shakespeare now. They've authenticated it. So our first problem is 5 sixths minus 1 half. 
Remember to write those fractions vertically, left to right, five, six, up, down, top to bottom, just like you'd read a book. So the five goes on top, the six goes on the bottom. Pause it and push play. Remember, you can always go back and look at your example or your list of steps in your learning goals to remember what to do next. Did you write one third? Let's see how we did that. So again, I wrote it horizontally so you can see how it was written on the practice page, but this is how you should be writing it to work it out. Always writing the fractions vertically, always writing the entire problem vertically. It's just easier to go through every step. So the first thing we notice is we have different denominators. So we've got to find an LCM or a least common multiple. I'll put both of these numbers inside the bottom layer of the cake, six and two, my denominators, and ask what number will divide evenly into both six and two. And two will. Two goes into six three times. Two goes into two one time. What goes into both three and one? Well, we know only one can divide evenly into those two numbers. So one goes into three three times, one goes into one, one time. And when we've repeated this set of numbers, then we know we're ready to make our L. There's that little jog when you have more than one layer. So now we're gonna multiply all the way around. Two times one is two, two times three is six, six times one is six. So our LCM is six. So we're gonna come over here and put our new LCD, our least common denominator, which is the same thing as the LCM, the least common multiple, and ask ourselves, what do we do to six to get six? Well, we multiply by one, so we have to multiply this by one. Five times one is five. What do I do to two to get six? We have to multiply it by three, so I'm gonna multiply this by three. One times three is three, and now we're ready to subtract. And I suggest that when you subtract, actually touch those numerators and then touch the operation and say it in your head because otherwise you might accidentally add. A lot of people do that. So say five minus three is two. And my denominator stays the same. Now, I know that because two and six are both even numbers, I can make another cake to simplify that. Remember, we make a cake to find the LCM, the GCF, and to simplify. So this time, I have to write them in the order of a fraction, two sixths. And I ask myself, what will go into two and six? Well, two will. And two goes into two one time, two goes into six three times. So what goes into one and three? One. And remember that when we're simplifying, we look for the bride and groom. Simplify, make a cake, look for the bride and groom. So it's that one-third on the top, and that's how we got an answer of one-third. Number two, one-half minus three-tenths. Pause it and push play when you're ready. Did you write one-fifth? Let's see how we did that. One half minus three tenths. So I have different denominators. I'm gonna put them in a cake. Two comma 10, because they're two different denominators. What will divide evenly into both two and 10? Two well. Two goes into two one time. Two goes into 10 five times. Now, second layer. What goes into both one and five? One. One goes into one one time. One goes into five five times. So I have repeated that set of numbers that was in the second layer of my cake. So I'm gonna make my L and multiply all the way around. Two times one is two, times one is two, times five is 10. My LCM equals 10. So that is my new common denominator or denominator that is the same. And I ask myself, what do I do to two to get to 10? And I multiply two times five, so I have to multiply one times five, which is five. What do I, do, what do I multiply by 10 here to get to 10? One. So three times one is three. Now remember, we're gonna touch that operation symbol to make sure we do the right operation. Five minus three is two. Now, as I look at this, two tenths, what I notice is in my cake, I have 
the fraction 2 tenths. And as I go up my cake, my final simplified answer, the bride and groom on top, is 1 fifth. This only works if your fraction 2 tenths is written in the same order, 2 tenths. 1 fifth is my simplified answer. Number three, when Coach Gunnels left on a business trip, her car had five sixths of a tank of gas. At the first rest stop, there was only one third tank left. How much gas had her car used? I want you to really think about this word problem. Look for key words. What are you trying to figure out here? Just to make sure you use the right operation. Go ahead and pause it and push play when you're ready. Did you write, and you should have written a complete sentence, Coach Gunnell's car had used one half of a tank of gas? Let's see how we did that one. When you were looking for keywords, did you find there was only one third tank left? Remember, when we're talking about how much is left, we're usually talking about subtraction. So that would tell us we started out with five sixths of a tank, and after driving for a while, we had one third of a tank left. We can find out how much she used, by subtracting. And we're going to start out by making a cake to find out our LCM so that we'll have common denominators. I'm going to put the three first because then if we simplify we'll have a closer uh, idea of what to do. So it doesn't matter what order we put these in when we're separating them by a comma when they're two different denominators. Not when, it, when it's a fraction it matters. What goes into both three and six? Three does. Three goes into three one time. 3 goes into 6 two times. We're in the second layer of the cake. What goes into 1 and 2? Just 1. 1 goes into 1 one time, and 1 goes into 2 two times. So we've repeated our set of denominators. We're going to make our L and multiply all the way around. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 2 is 6. So our LCM is 6. If you looked at these two denominators and you said, hey, I know 3 will divide evenly into 6, then you also would have known that 6 is going to be your common denominator. But I don't want you to make mistakes by just carelessly picking one here. Make sure you have a good method of thought to figuring that out. What do I do to 6 to get to 6? I multiply times 1. So I multiply 5 times 1, and that is 5, 6. It stays the same. If my pieces are the same size, the amount that I have can't change. What do I do to 3 to get 6? Times 2. So 1 times 2 is 2. Now I'm going to make sure I touch the operation symbol. 5 minus 2 is 3, and my denominator 6 stays the same. Now, if I were making a cake to simplify this, even though 3 is an odd number and 6 is an even number, because 3 will divide into 6, I know that I can simplify. So coming back to my cake, here's my fraction 3 6 here's my fraction 3 6 1 half, 1 half. Simplify, make a cake, look for the bride and groom on top. So my final answer is 1 half, but I'm not done until I've written it in a sentence. So make sure you write a good sentence with actual names, no pronouns, and actual numbers. It's time to challenge yourself. This is my favorite Shakespearean play, Much Ado About Nothing. And you can see some pretty famous people there that you probably recognize. They still make movies um, on Shakespeare's plays because they're so timeless. Here's our challenge yourself question. Mrs. Gooding exercises one fourth of an hour every day. The Hulk exercises one and two thirds hours per week. Who exercises more? How much more? Show your work and explain your answer in your flip journal and come back tomorrow ready to check your answer. Finishing up, review your learning goals. Are you at a level one? You're still struggling. A level two, you've almost got it, but you have a few questions that you've written down. Or a level three, you've got it in your learning. Um, super subtraction, you have completed lesson 10-4, subtract fractions with unlike denominators. I can't wait to see you tomorrow.